Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, when I handicap men's tennis, in my opinion, there are four elite players, and then there's everyone else. In other words, four guys dominate the sport. Occasionally, other guys will break through and will win a tournament here or there, right? But in large part, four guys rule the roost. The four guys are Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, Andy Murray, and Roger Federer. Right? Those are the four guys. Now, I believe there's a major casino mispricing here. Right? My point is not that this individual wins the French Open, but that you're getting the most leverage, the most value on this individual, and so he needs to be part of your betting portfolio. Understand, once you take value from the casino, you could always hedge the play later as your guy does well in the tournament. Now of the 128 guys in the French Open, let's break it down in terms of brackets. And this guy will leap out at you. Right? In one bracket of 64, you have three of the four horsemen. Right? Three of the four elites. Djokovic, Nadal and Murray, believe it or not, are all in the same bracket of 64. Right? Understand, necessarily, the three of them are going to kill off two of the three of them. Right? Before they get to the finals. Only one man is going to be left standing. Now in the other bracket of 64, believe it or not, it's Roger Federer and everyone else, right? Roger Federer right now on futures for the French Open is 10 to 1. He used to be 20 to 1. Now he's 10 to 1. You need to have him as part of your portfolio to win the whole thing. Understand, he doesn't have to worry about Murray, about Djokovic, or Nadal until the finals. So Roger Federer at 10 to 1 is someone you need to think about. Let's talk about some of the guys he might run into as he tries to make it to the finals. Right? Keep in mind, his path is much easier than the path of the other three guys. Right? In his group of 64, I'm just going to name some of the names that leap out at me. The first is Tomas Burdich. Just understand, while Federer has had problems with Burdich in the past. Federer has won their last three head-to-head -head matchups, including a match on clay, right, recently in the Rome Masters, right? So understand, Federer has held his own against Burdich. Now, the next guy I'm going to name is a bit more problematical, Gail Monfields. Right? Understand, the last two times he's faced Federer on clay, he's won. Not Federer. Right? Most recently in the ATP World Masters in Monte Carlo. But I have to tell you, Monfields is really up and down in my book. And I wonder whether he even makes it to a match against Roger Federer. Right? Just understand, though, you're getting long odds on Monfields, too. So if you take Federer, you can hedge the Federer play with a little bit sprinkled on Monfields. Another guy who leaps out here in the bracket is Stan Warenka. But understand, as with Burdich, Roger Federer has won their last three head-to-head -head matchups, including one on clay. The reason we're mentioning Clay is that's the surface of the French Open. Another guy who leaps out at you is Kay Nishikori. But here again, right, Roger Federer has won the last two head-to-head matchups. 
against this opponent. Right, Fabio Fognini? Here again, Federer has won the last three matchups against this opponent. Gilly Simon? Here again, Federer has won the last few matchups against this opponent. His win streak against Simon is actually at five. Right, so my point to you is, of all of the big guns in the French Open, right, including a diminished Rafael Nadal and an ascendant Andy Murray on clay, look at what Murray's been doing on clay recently. Just understand the way the seedings are. Roger Federer has the cleaner, clearer path to the tournament finals over the other three guys. And you're getting significantly longer odds, 10 to 1, on Roger Federer. I believe he is the value play here. Understand, if you get 10 to 1 on Roger Federer and he makes the finals against Djokovic, Nadal, who's dominated the French Open, right? Uh, Murray, you could always hedge the play at that point because, of course, you got such a huge endowment from the casino, such huge leverage on the front end. So, do your own research. Google the seeding for the French Open. I believe the value play here is clear. I believe it's 10 to 1 underdog Roger Federer. I think Federer has easier matchups before the finals than any of the other big players. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.